entire entire leadership team has done a great job. Um, they've really worked hard during the pandemic. Um, in every way. In fact, though, I ended up giving everybody a leadership award this this past uh, January, and I, because I couldn't pick just one director, um, they they've all done an exceptional job um, responding to the pandemic and keeping us all safe. Starting off-site parking and shuttling and all of the things that they've done, <laughs> delivering meals, um, you know, just done a fantastic job overall. Um, I always like to start off with a little humor, and I feel like this. For Father's Day, I'm giving my dad an hour of free tech support. <laughs> my son would do that for me. Yes. <laughs> Come on, Dad, let me borrow it. I'll be careful, I won't scratch it. What harm can come to a credit card? <laughs> My daughter doesn't believe there's any harm at all. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may update your Facebook status. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. It's the only way we can get him to listen to us. They're inside the TV. <laughs> Maybe next time you'll try a little sunscreen. And I recommend that highly nowadays. Um, this is, um, we hosted, well we didn't host, we had a virtual, we were supposed to host the um, LCS Life Care Services Funk Business Unit meeting. And we did it virtually this year, we had it in April. Um, and, and this is a video that Cassie Haley, our community administrator, put together about our community over the last um, several months, a little over a year.
that. I think Boyd has some announcements this morning. Thank you, Chuck. And um, you thank all the leadership team. I think we ought to thank Chuck for the good job he's done. <laughs> the best community administrator that uh, LCS has. Um, so I just uh, want to announce that the uh, Residents Association is considering forming a new group of volunteers to act as resident trip leaders. Uh, a little background, uh, pretty soon we're going to be able to travel again uh, to go on Westminster vehicles to the symphony or go to plays or the opera or visit museums in Austin or San Antonio or Fort Worth, go to wineries. And on trips like this, uh, Ruth often is not able to uh, recruit a resident to uh, lead the group. And so the responsibility falls on the driver or on a resident volunteer or two who jump into the fray. And uh, that creates a problem for the driver having uh, distractions from more than one resident. And sometimes uh, having more than res one resident telling you to turn left or to turn right. I think we've been on those trips. So the proposal under consideration, we haven't ad adopted it, is to form a trip leaders group. And trip leaders would uh, sign up uh, for trips of interest to them. And uh, uh, this would be on trips where an associate wouldn't otherwise be present. You know, some of the bus trips that we have out of town, we uh, sometimes have an uh, associate there. So they would be designated as leader for that trip, and they would help the driver on check-ins, checking on people that didn't show up or forgot the time, uh, be the, the, the traveler's contact with the driver on the road, avoiding uh, driver distractions, be the person uh, in contact with the driver on pickup times and returns, and uh, those sorts of things. Um, and where it's appropriate, be familiar with the itinerary and maybe the destination and perhaps share some thoughts about where, where we're going and things to look for there. Uh, and then check the group in at the destination if there's, if there's a check-in procedure. And to help the driver at the uh, conclusion of the trip to be sure that everybody gets back on board and isn't left at the McVeigh Museum by mistake. And then uh, distribute and uh, evaluation cards and then collect them on the way back. And uh, I think the most important duty of the trip leader altogether would be to know where the restrooms are. <laughs> and so uh, that's the proposal. We're gonna have a meeting a week from today at 1.30 in the chapel. Uh, Ruth, um, Charlie McEwen and I are going to be there to discuss this proposal with any residents that are that are interested in talking about it and um, see if we can uh, make a recommendation to the board about uh, whether or not to uh, proceed. So if you're interested, it's going to be Wednesday, June 30th at 1.30 in the chapel. We encourage you to come and uh, visit with us about this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Boyd. Um, so just to give you a little update on COVID. Um, we haven't had any new cases, no active cases currently. Um, our infection rate's 1.02%. We've had 29 cases since this all began um, for our residents and 43 cases, no active cases in our associates. Um, we're no longer testing um, if you're vaccinated unless you're symptomatic, then we will. Um, at this point, 99.4% of our residents are vaccinated, so almost 100%. There's a couple people that are allergic to vaccines, so they didn't get them. 85.6% of our associates are vaccinated, and that continues to climb. That's really a good number. <laughs> 85 was my goal, so we're continuing to work on it. Um, we are in, West, um, in phase 3B, right, uh, reopening. We do need to continue to wear masks when we visit in healthcare center, so the Arbor or the assisted living. There is no limit to visitors um, in your apartments. Um, you're also allowed to meet in common areas. Social distancing is um, encouraged but not required. 
um, service providers no longer have to make appointments to come in. They must screen in and wear masks, however. Um, no guests still in the audience for activity programs. How many people here are vaccinated? All of you, right? Yeah, so we're all safe here. <laughs> Open to, uh, up to two guests are allowed in the dining room at breakfast and lunch only. I've been asked when that will increase. Um, I expect it to increase um, in August 1. That's the plan. Uh, quarantine only for those who are symptomatic. Um, in your dining room? Um, if, if you're not vaccinated, uh, if you come into a positive, uh, into contact with a positive person, we're not requiring vaccination, but we are requiring you to report it, or to report your travel to resident health services. Guest rooms are not open and available, and we're at full capacity in activities and also in our dining rooms, yay. Um, health center visitation guidelines. Visitation is open for the healthcare center and the assisted living normal visiting hours. Please follow all precautionary guidelines, including wearing masks, screening in, hand washing, and sanitizing. Um, contact the health services reception desk if you have any questions. Um, just remember that it's licensed separately, right, than the independent living. So there are special, more stringent requirements. We're also inspected by the Department of Health and Senior Services, and they're requiring masks to be worn in healthcare still. Um, so you will get us a deficiency automatically if they catch you in there without one. So please, please make sure you wear your mask, make sure you screen in, get your temperature checked, and, and sign in, okay? Um, I think you, actually, my last chat, right after, about an hour after I did my last chat, the CDC sent out this new graphic um, for vaccinated people. And it's basically showing you that you can do pretty much anything now that you're vaccinated. So um, the last graphic I showed you, there was still um, a lot of suggestions of wearing masks when you were indoors. Um, and then that's changed, the CDC's changed those rules. And that's one of the things that Westminster's tried to do is respond to the CDC's changing and the, and the rules of every regulatory agency and we're held to the most stringent of those rules. So if the state um, relaxes their rules and, and the federal government, CMS, the Center for Medicare Services continues to have stronger rules, we have to follow whatever is the strongest. Um, and that's why the mask and everything in healthcare still, and our associates are still wearing masks. And, and all, all of us want to be residents, so we don't have to wear masks. I'm looking for an apartment now. I haven't decided on what size yet. And my wife doesn't want to come yet. But I, anyway, I had some questions that were submitted late, so I'll go over those that were sent via email. Here's some questions that I received uh, over last month. When will the new chairs arrive for the Laurel Diner? I answered that last time, that the answer hasn't changed. We're still being told that they should arrive sometime in September. Um, they were ordered in January. The the snowbid storm, the winter storm, caused some uh, chemical manufacturing plants down south um, to be damaged and they had to repair those. So the, basically what's holding up our chairs is the foam product that you use for the cushions in the chairs. And then also there's lumber shortages everywhere. But they're scheduled still to come in in September. Uh, can, can you update us on the progress on the bistro? All of you are anxious about the bistro, I know. And I'm ready for the bistro to be open just so we can stop talking about it, right? <laughs> um, it is making progress. It doesn't seem like it. We've had to, we had some really fast progress with the demolition that was completed. Um, and then we met to talk about the ex additional structural needs for Harrisville Hall's expansion. And I, I was under the assumption, that was a pretty hefty deck out there. I mean, it's concrete construction, but um, it's not quite hefty enough to support a roof and walls. So we're having to put some structural supports in underneath the restaurant area. So if you notice in the parking garage, in between the two buildings, there's about eight parking spaces that are taken out and they've dug up the concrete at that location and they're going to put in footings and then uh, stronger 
third concrete columns to support this addition out here. They'll also be cutting a big hole in the concrete and going back with a thinner concrete floor. All of that's gonna be taking place over the next six to eight weeks. Probably first week of July, second week of July, they'll build a construction wall similar to what they did um, at the bistro area or the fitness rooms. Um, they'll build a construction wall along this um, glass wall um, so that we're still able to use this room and we'll lose a, a few feet of it, but um, we'll still be able to use this room for functions and then they'll start to take out the glass and all of that and demolish in preparation for the new construction. All of that being said, all of the design work, the structural supports and everything that's going in, we were hoping to open the bistro in September. We now believe it's going to be the end of November, early December, but it is coming and it is coming faster than it was originally planned. The original plan was it to be completed at the same time the Windsor Tower will be completed, which is May, June of next year. So we will get it this year. Um, I just saw a menu for it. We're working on that, the dynamics of it. Um, so be patient. There isn't a lot happening in the area right now. Um, we're waiting on some structural supports. The steel has been ordered, and when that comes in, a lot of work is going to take place. Um, so probably the end of July, you'll see a lot more work in there. Next question, do guests need to wear masks when visiting, even when they are vaccinated? And the answer to that question is yes. All visitors must wear masks even if they are vaccinated. And I'll let you know if that changes, but for now, that's the rule. Um, can, we con can you continue to broadcast Westminster programs on 1890 even when we can attend in person? Um, we are recording most programs and presentations and, and placing them on the resident portal. They are, and they are available on YouTube. Does everybody know where the resident portal is and how you can get to it? Anybody using it? If you're using it, raise your hand. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Um, can we get meals delivered even when the dining room in the Laurel uh, is at full capacity? Yes. Um, there is, delivery is available for a $2 per meal charge, which is really minimal. Um, a lot of our competitors charge $10 for a meal delivery. Um, can we reduce the amount of paper we receive? We're working on it. If you will help us by using the portal more and more and using our website, um, that will allow us to reduce the paper. Um, yes, there is a movement towards paper reduction throughout the campus um, and, and please use the resident portal. It's really good information um, and, and it kills a lot less trees. When are annual cleanings coming back? They are coming back effective April, I'm sorry, July 12th. Um, residents will be able to schedule annual cleanings through the Environmental Services Department just as you could before. Any of your departments need an annual cleaning? Yeah, so. We're a little behind, so it'll, it'll take us a while, but be patient with us. We will get that up and running. Um, do associates need to wear a mask? Unfortunately, yes, we do. It is still our policy that all associates are required to wear a mask. Um, associates that have not been vaccinated are required to wear the um, N95 or KN95s. Um, the rest of the associates can wear cloth or paper, surgical mask, whatever. Um, be required for that to change? Um, for our management company and CDC to change the recommendations for senior living. And the, senior, the CDC, Department of Health and Senior Services are still saying that as a precaution, we should continue, workers should continue to wear a mask in senior living. Those of us with hearing problems cannot understand the Laurel Dining Room staff. Yeah, we'll do our best to repeat ourselves um, and, and do the best we can, but the masks have to be worn for now. So. Uh, can, we, can you give us an update on the swim pool? This is what I thought you might be bringing fruit for and, and spoiled vegetables. Um, we have re we've cut out a couple steps on the pool. We believe we've <coughs> determined the source of the water. Um, we are wor working to um, remedy
remedy that um, and repair the area and put the stairs back and then we'll put a new seal on it, a new coating, and then bring the pool back in service. Hopefully, we'll be able to complete that by the end of July. Um, let's see, via email, I received this. Um, a couple of have, have a reservation in the Carlisle would like to use one of their free meals by joining us at dinner in the Laurel. Is that acceptable? Uh, I'm going to say for now, no, um, because we're dealing with a little bit of what's called compression dining. That's when everybody comes at the same time, and it happens in lots of restaurants. Um, and what happens is the kitchen gets backed up and your ticket times are longer. Hopefully the quality of food is still good, but we want to make sure that we're taking care of our current residents and not add more um, trouble to the mix. So. But for now, we'll, we'll not allow those folks to come in at dinner time. You can have lunch with them or breakfast, um, and we'll revisit that as we get closer to August, but I don't want to add more to our dining room staff. Um, and let's see, what's going on with the marketing parking area? That's all dug up. I think I mentioned that. That's, that's all work for the Harris Bell Hall expansion. Jeff, will we lose some parking spaces with the supports being put in down there? No, okay, it won't. Good. It will be tighter, though. Um, it, the parking spots will remain the same size, but if you're not careful, you could uh, run into a column. We do that around here. Yeah, we do that. We'll probably, we'll probably put a piece of carpet on it to yeah. slow, you know, the, no, I'm just kidding. Probably. Yes, <laughs> I'll, I'll test it. But uh, it's, you know, it's angled parking, so you'll still be able to use it. Um, it should not affect you getting in and out of the vehicle so it should be okay but it's just the biggest part is the concrete co um, footings that are in the ground and then the the columns themselves will be increased in size there will be additional columns added but they're outside of the parking spaces and that was designed purposely just some reminders um, please lock your doors and roll up your windows when parking your car the safest practice is always to turn your vehicle off <laughs> Roll up your windows, hide your valuables, and lock your vehicle when you park. Turn off your car. That's a really, you know, don't leave your keys in your car. That's bad planning. So, yeah. Please remind your visitors to wear their mask when on our campus. We don't like yelling at people, so you yell at them for us. You tell them nicely. Please wear your mask. Chuck, can we? They can take them off in the apartment. Can't yes, of course. Yeah, they can take okay. them off in the apartment. Beginning June 1st, I mentioned this in my last chat, dining dollars will be increased to $500 a month allocation. If you're interested in changing programs to dining dollars, so if you're on the meal a day program, you can contact reception and they can happily change you to dining dollar. Yeah. Yes. Um, as Boyd says, this is uh, monopoly money. Right? Yeah. I'm giving you an allocation that's in your contract, that's in your monthly service fee. I'm not increasing your monthly service fee to give you additional money. The, if we went from 465 to $500 to provide you a little bit more flexibility, right? Especially with hopefully the cocktail lounge that'll be coming on board when we start, when we start the, the um, Carlisle restaurant. Um, and all of the other things that are going on. So you have a full $500 a month to spend in any venue, the little store, the Laurel Dining Room, eventually the Bistro again, um, and then the Carlisle, the Cocktail Lounge, anything you want, anywhere on the campus. Doesn't cost you any more. I will tell you that if, how many of you are on the meal credit a day plan? Nobody? One? The dining dollars program is a much better deal because if you think about it, you're able to split up meals. Say you're eating a light lunch or maybe you want to go in for just a couple scrambled eggs and a piece of toast in the morning for breakfast. You can go back for lunch or for dinner. And if you were eating, eating with the meal a day credit program, then you lost it, right? Maybe you, if you buy scrambled eggs and toast, that's a meal. So in, in essence, you're a lot better off with the dining dollars program. It's a better deal for you. It doesn't benefit me in telling you that. It's I just the truth. 
I have no reason to lie there. Chuck. Yes. I understand that in the little store, you can use dining dollars for the, the food that food service has prepared, not for other things. So I wanted to make that real clear. Yeah, that's that's correct. Thank you. The reason that we do that is those the groceries in the little store, we don't want to dilute the food budget, right? We actually want um, you to use your dining dollars for food and beverage prepared items, meals. Um, if we allowed you to spend dining dollars for the pens or Kleenex or cards, that dilutes the raw food budget for the department and, and eventually eats up the food dollars you would like us to spend on steak and good fish and shrimp and things like that. So, um, healthcare center and assisted living residents will be allowed to dine in the Laurel with a reservation for breakfast and lunch prior to 3 p.m. Um, the, I, the reason I'm asking for you all to make reservations, if, and they must be hosted by an independent living resident. Um, I know that you have some friends that you'd like to have lunch or dinner with again. Um, you'll be allowed to have breakfast or lunch. We just asked for a reservation so that we can cancel their meal and the other level of care, and we know where they're going to be and where they're going to eat. Um, I would recommend that you're careful with the residents in health care and assisted living that you take out or take and meet for lunch because you want to make sure that they're independent enough to handle eating in the the independent living dining room and the the nursing staff can help you determine that if you have questions um, some more reminders um, pets are not allowed in the dining rooms what please don't bring your pets to the dining room it's it's offending people um, and, and it's not supposed to happen. Um, please do not wear shorts or allow guests to wear shorts in the Laurel Dining Room. There is a dress code, and that's been approved many years ago. There was a big debate over it, and the uh, dress code is what the dress code is for now. So no shorts in the Laurel Dining Room. For dinner only, or? All meals. All meals. Sorry, yeah, all meals. Unless the Resident Association wants to take on that, um, that uh, subject. Life Care Health Center um, and AL residents again will be allowed to dine in the Laurel with a reservation for breakfast and lunch prior to 3 p.m. Must be a guest of an independent living residence. And then if you're having any trouble with the resident portal, maybe you're locked out because you forgot your password or you're having trouble, um, Ruth or Rachel can help you with that. Just reach out to them. They'll be happy to walk you through it. Um, it's really simple once you get in. Just some reminders about emergency procedures, especially now that you know we're we're hitting those months where we have a lot of pop-up thunderstorms. Um, a little bit of confusion about what to do if there's a tornado warning. I've had some questions about it. Um, if there's a tornado warning for our campus, we'll announce it, and you should move to internal corridor spaces away from the exterior doors and windows, and an all clear will be announced when it's safe to return to your apartments. Um, if there's a fire alarm, you just shelter in place. And unless we ask you to evacuate, you're good there. Unless your apartment, of course, is on fire, and then you should, you know, move into the hall and let us know. But if you, also, if you, if you burnt the toast, bacon, or oatmeal, you don't have to cook oatmeal for 30 minutes, by the way. <laughs> a minute or two is usually good enough. I like instant oatmeal. It's uh, microwavable, takes about a minute. Um, if you do happen to burn something, please don't open the door to the hall. Open your window. The reason I ask you to do that is, is it, 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 it alarms for everyone when you open your door because it, then the smoke gets out to the hall. The fire alarm system thinks that the fire has spread outside of your apartment and then it shuts all the fire doors and it alarms the entire building um, so if you if you do smoke up your apartment just open your windows call us and we'll help you we'll get some fans you can pull your emergency cord um, press your pendant button and let us know that you need help and we'll bring fans and, and help clear the room for you construction update uh, we are making progress if you go to the, the um, 
Westminster website or the resident portal, there is um, cameras that you can watch this um, happening live. So I invite you to do that. It's pretty pretty interesting how quickly they're they're moving along. Um, you can see that the Windsor Tower um, expansion has been topped out. So it's it's um, the the concrete on the last level has been poured, and they had a little party to celebrate that. Um, and it's amazing how many people are working on that project at the same time and, and how they're coordinating all of the efforts for all of the different trades. It's pretty impressive. And they haven't had any injuries um, since the project began, so that's very good too. This is too small to see. <laughs> I, I will try to um, send this out in a um, kind of a summary of this, but just to give you an idea of where we're at, where, you know, they finished the last floor on the second floor of the Carlisle. They're now moving on to the third. So you've been seeing them building the, the forms for the third floor. Um, they're not gonna be shutting down the healthcare center entrance anymore, which is good news for us. They're now um, doing the concrete pumping from the road or the north um, entrance or various other areas, so they shouldn't have to shut it down anymore. On the Windsor um, infill tower, it's like I said, the, they poured the last level of concrete, so now they're starting to build the walls, um, the exterior walls. You can see those coming up on the first, second, now the third floor, and they're starting with interior walls, rough ends for the the water lines and the electrical and things like that, the HVAC systems. So really making a lot of progress and we are on schedule um, and so far on budget. So bridge number two, that was the bridge that connects the Preston to the pool area. That is complete if you've seen it. Um, looks really pretty nice. Um, the, there's some outlets on the wall. That is where our um, LED screens are gonna go, and that's meant to be a veterans uh, hall, an honor hall. Um, the Windsor Courtyard is complete, 85% complete. Um, and we're gonna have our first event out there on July the 2nd. Um, Bistro Expansion is making good progress. They are start, starting to rebuild walls where they can. Um, I mentioned the demolition of Harris Bell Hall, this wall here. Um, let's see, oh, the drive between the Windsor and the Preston is open. Um, please try not to drive around the north end of the Windsor. It's really tight in there. Construction vehicles, a lot of traffic. It's just a dangerous area. If you can avoid it, please make sure that you do. Um, try to stay away from that as much as possible. Tower Crane is once again online. Um, I think I mentioned in my last chat that the tower crane was offline for about three months due to some paperwork. Um, it cost them about $97,000 a month. So for that mobile crane, and they were still paying the other, the crane operator to move the big crane so it wouldn't be in the way of the little crane. That's a really complicated process. That's not on us though. That's not on us. It's all part of their problem. We pay, we have a guaranteed price, so we negotiate it. Um, they also installed an exterior elevator for construction purposes on the Windsor Infill Tower. You can see that on the west side if you look at the, the camera. And a stairwell as well on the inside of the courtyard. Um, community update. Everybody knows we're at 100%. Um, regular seating. I think I mentioned the $2 delivery fee. Reservations are required for dinner only if four or more and you can't have up to two outside guests for breakfast and lunch. Uh, 2020 building grounds projects for our current campus. So the corridor wall project is moving along rapidly. Um, we're now on level one um, and they sanded outside of my office yesterday. They're um, almost complete with all the sanding. They'll start painting level one. Um, it should be finished, I believe, this week on level one, maybe early next week, and then they'll move down to the ground floor, and that's the last of it. Um, they are starting to rehang uh, artwork 
on some of the levels and then we're replacing the handrails at the last part of the job. Landscape repairs have been completed on almost the entire campus with the exception of the Windsor Courtyard. The north area by the healthcare center still has some work to do. We have some planters to move. We need to do some staining over there and some additional planting work. The bid's been approved for that. Some of it was damaged during the freeze. The Preston Boiler Project, that's something I mentioned a while back where we're removing all of the Preston boilers replacing them all with new, more efficient boilers, and we're gonna move those to the top of the Preston building. Um, that is at the permitting stage. So we've completed the design, we've ordered the equipment, and now it's at the city waiting for approval. Once they approve, we can start construction. Anybody know that working with the city of Boston is really fun? <laughs> Especially, apparently, if you have a building that was built in 1967. I really like to pay a lot of attention to you. Um, the emergency planning and system evaluation um, with the mechanical engineers ongoing. I think I talked about this previously, but we learned a lot of lessons with COVID, or SNOVID, and all, as well as snowstorm, um, about insulation of our air handlers, uh, making sure that our, our well can serve us if we need it. Um, so we're doing some connectivity um, plans and we're also upgrading generators. We upgraded the Carlisle generator to provide services for the entire building. So the entire uh, Carlisle will be on the emergency generator. It's my goal over the next several months to do that for the Windsor and also the Preston. So we'll be upgrading the generators. Even though we didn't lose electricity, uh, because we're on the emergency user's grid, um, we're going to go ahead, the board has decided that they want to um, make sure that we have full electricity and full water when we need it, so we're working on that. I'll, I'll answer some questions at the end. Um, so I think that's good news. We've had some chiller issues with the Windsor building, the HVAC system. Hopefully you didn't feel it though. Anybody notice any chiller and air conditioning issues? That's the idea. Good. Um, if you notice at the northwest corner of the Windsor building, there's a mobile chiller in place. Um, and that's because the control boards on one of our chillers went down. It's a computerized system and the parts for it, the repair are on back order. It's going to take about three months to get those in. So we have this mobile chiller sitting there um, and, and preparation for days like today when we need two chillers to run the building so it'll kick on and, and help solve our air conditioning issues um, we also have some have had some HVAC issues air conditioning issues with our kitchen at the Laurel um, and we have a mobile mobile chiller in place for it we lost a parking spot on the west side um, it's, it was one day it was about a hundred degrees in the kitchen um, so we were able to put a mobile chiller in place and resolve that while we wait for a new air conditioning system to be built. Kelly McThinia um, has joined us she, as an associate administrator. She is part of LCS's Life Care Services Professional Development Program. She's an administrator in training. She'll be my 22nd administrator in training. Um, she is being provided a salary by Life Care Services and she's here to learn from us and to do a department rotation over the next year, year and a half, to gain experience um, and, and prepare her for becoming an administrator one day. So if you see her in the halls, please give her Westminster welcome. She smiles a lot even through the mask. So. Um, 2021 has been a pretty good year for us so far. Um, you may have seen the little award that we have sitting by Betsy. Um, that is for the best in wellness senior living communities in North America, the New Step Beacon Award it's called. Um, we received an award for our last annual report, Experience is Everything, um, which our new annual report should be coming out in the next couple weeks. Um, Julian Reed was um, 
elected um, 80 over 80 award. Um, we five stars Medicare for the 13th year. So that's um, pretty impressive. Our bond investors that I had a call with yesterday were pretty impressed by that. Um, one deficiency free infection control survey this year so far in assisted living. Um, Robin Akins received the resident health and she's the resident health and wellness director. She has received the emerging leader award uh, through Leading H Texas, and she gets a scholarship to attend the leadership institute. So that's pretty neat. Certificate of recognition from Westminster's performance um, from the state of Texas, which was really nice. We received. Um, and the Today Show story, if you were able to see that, about the third floor assisted living and the white construction folks, pretty interesting. Um, how just an exchange of notes became a real friendship there. And we were recently, we received word that we've been nominated as best of the best, um, top five senior living facilities. Um, this is an Austin American Statesman Award, and there's voting, online voting, that will start July the 2nd. Um, so I'll, I'll be sending out some more information about that. You have to go, anybody have a computer here or smartphone? Oh, good. So you can go online and hopefully vote for us so we could be number one. That'd be awesome. Um, so we'll see. Anybody willing to vote for us for that? Oh, good. Yeah, there's a few of you. Appreciate that. Just a reminder, Extraordinary impression star cards. Um, if you see an associate that's just going above and beyond, um, take a moment and write a star card. You can pick them up at any reception desk and turn them in at any reception desk or to any manager. We absolutely do make sure that um, the, the associates receive those and they, they get points throughout the year. And then we have a star of the year for each department. And each month they get a gift um, based on how many uh, star cards they received. I know that there was a little bit of a delay for some of your star cards to get delivered because we had an opening um, in our HR department, but that opening's been filled and they've caught up on that. So I apologize for the delay, but thank you for bringing it to my attention. It was quickly addressed. Um, Ruth has always got a lot of great events going on, but I just wanted to go over a few of them. Um, July the 2nd, that's we're gonna have a um, little food and drink roast some hot dogs and um, have some live music and some drinks in the Windsor Courtyard. And this will start at 10 a.m. and uh, last until about 12. I think we're gonna have hot dogs and potato salad and some pizza. We're gonna try out our new grill and our pizza oven um, and maybe play some cornhole or bocce ball or something and uh, try out some of the amenities in our new grill. The 4th of July party, um, Spectrum Swing Band's going to be here. Um, the Austin Civic Wind Ensemble, Patriotic Camp Concert in the Preston Courtyard is gonna be on July the 6th, Tuesday. Um, going for a lake swim and walk at Emma Long Park on July the 12th and the 26th. And a resident association quarterly meeting is at 2 p.m. followed by socials or a social. Right? So that should be fun. Maybe the whole thing can be social. I'll just skip my presentation. Um, and this, my chat next month will be at 2 p.m. so that I don't conflict with exercise. Um, and it'll be on July the 16th. July the 16th is also our Alzheimer's fundraising kickoff from 6 to 8 p.m. And that'll be in the Preston um, Courtyard and we'll have new shirts for this year and uh, Light for Hope, um, similar to what we did in the past. And you can make donations at the reception desk and pick up your luminary and write a, write a hope wish on it um, and then display it with the rest of ours. Um, we have a book drive for Child Incorporated and it supports the Head Start Centers and that's on July the 20th. And there'll be, you can donate books for children or purchase books through um, Rachel, and um, we'll be donating those to this organization. And then our theme dinner for July is Sock Hop. So kind of a diner theme. Um, that should be quite interesting. I heard they really did a great job on the hoedown. So well, I'm sure they're gonna do a great job with this uh, theme dinner as well. And the trip's coming up. 
Trips are restarting in July. Um, guided Austin city tour, museum and library tours, private tour of um, Meet the Popular Artist and Sculptor Benini. So really lots of great stuff going on. There's a picture of a hot dog and some bluebell ice cream. Yes, we will have bluebell ice cream in the Windsor Courtyard. Listeria free bluebell ice cream, so, right? Can I say that? That's a light up for hope event, just a reminder. I would like to see all of you there. It'd be great um, to get the luminaries uh, around the courtyard again. That was really a great sight, very meaningful um, last time. So, um, I think Ruth has asked about it. We've been advertising about it, but we would like for you all to send us content for the Veterans Honor Wall. Um, to send pictures of veterans past and present, um, please send or drop off to Ruth. Um, you can email it to her at ruth at wmanor.com. Um, don't be shy. Send us everything you've got. We'll, we'll be using it in our display. I think it's really going to be beautiful when it's done. And I think that's all I've got. So we have some questions. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, we have been told that there may be some rolling blackouts in electricity in, in Austin. Are, will, we, will we be affected by those? We, we should not be. Um, we are identified as an emergency um, user, so everyone um, should be affected before we are. We're on the emergency circuit, and that's what kept our electricity from having rolling blackouts during the snowstorm. Um, if we do have a blackout or lose electricity, we do have areas of refuge um, that'll be on the generator at all times. So the one thing that, and Boyd's well aware of this, um, that we're discussing in the board is we really want to try and bring the entire building um, under power when there's a loss of electricity. We've been very blessed. Um, about three years ago, we had a power outage and I went to City Hall with um, Bill Brown and some of the other board members and uh, had us identified as an emergency user. Um, so ours, we should not lose power for that reason. Um, okay. Chuck, any plans for a shred day? I believe so. Um, I thought I saw something about shred day. July 23rd. July the 23rd. Sorry, that should have made my hits for July, huh? Sorry. July 23rd. Shred day. Chuck, how do you get to the Windsor Courtyard from Preston building without climbing stairs? Well, the best way is to take the shuttle to the to the North Windsor entrance. Unfortunately, okay. yeah. All right. When we, you know, because we're building that restaurant, the bistro, it's kind of interrupted the normal flow. Okay. The only way to get there is through the healthcare center entrance. You can take the shuttle, okay. or yes, you can walk up the stairs up the back way from marketing. Okay, thanks. Try to help you work off the calories for the ice cream and the pizza, though. <laughs> Chuck, I have a question about the construction that's going across the street from the west side of, or east side of uh, the Windsor. I noticed they are starting something. Can you give us any ups, uh, insight? I can, and I don't like it, but. Um, it is a senior living product called Grand Living. It is a senior living product that has memory care, assisted living, and independent living. It's typically um, what I call stick construction. So, you know, wood and sheetrock. Um, it's a rental, so it's not a life care or life plan product. Though it is a competitor, it's not a direct competitor to us. I don't think it's gonna hurt us, um, but it is lousy to have competition ex right across the street. Um, they're supposed to be a pretty good um, senior living operator, but they've only been in it a short time. Um, it's backed by an investment group, and the Grove intends to, I believe, Castle Rock is the name of the company, that's developing the commercial side of the Grove, and they're working in 
concert with Grand Living. And if you remember, um, we, we had a plan to put a building over there and their economies and ours did not align. And I'm still glad we didn't do that deal at the price that they wanted it. Um, but yeah, there is a senior living community being built across the street from the Windsor Village. Do you know if it's five stories tall? I believe it is five stories, yes. Mm -hmm. It's similar to the building that we were planning to put there. It's almost the exact same footprint because it, that footprint makes sense for that space. But yes, ma'am. I'm thinking about getting a water cannon that you all can use regularly <laughs> on the grill. <laughs> I just have a question about the bridge that was built. Mm -hmm. Is that in any way going to connect with the parking garage? No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, there won't be a way to get to the garage or the press and the long way around. No, ma'am. No. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you.